Welcome to lecture nine of financial statement analysis. This is part D on the discounted cash flow model. So the discounted cash flow model is the fifth and final way of valuing a business that we're going to learn in this course. As I've talked about before, there's no best method. You now have five different tools and they'll give you slightly different outcomes in different circumstances. And it's up to you to understand the advantages and disadvantages of applying each of these tools in any particular situation. The free cash flow model is a valuation method that doesn't require us to use our accounting information. We value the firm by taking the forecast free cash flows and discounting back each year. It doesn't use our balance sheet. It doesn't use our profit and loss statement. We use the free cash flow. We calculated free cash flow in this subject as no pat minus change in NOA. But there are other ways of calculating free cash flows where you don't have to look at the income statement or the balance sheet. You can use the cash flow statement and reformat that to calculate free cash flow. So this is accounting without accruals. It's taking away the complexity of accounting and we forecast our free cash flows into the future and discount them back to get the value. In terms of implementing this model, it's most similar to the dividend discount model. So with this formula, VF equals the value of the firm. Free cash, FCF is the free cash flow forecast from our forecast template. RF is the cost of capital of the firm, which we learn about in lecture 10. And so if we want to value the shares of a company, we need to value the equity. So we'd take the value of the firm here and minus NFO, the net financial obligations in the current period to get the value of the firm's equity. So this is the model. It's applied in a very similar way to the dividend discount model in the way it's set up. You forecast the free cash flows first. You estimate the cost of capital for the firm. We're going to use a weighted average cost of capital in lecture 10. You can forecast the free cash flow growth patterns to make your terminal value assumption. Again, there's three different terminal value assumptions you could make. You could assume free cash flow is equal to zero. You could assume free cash flow is going to stay constant, or you could assume free cash flow grows by a certain percentage every year. You then calculate the terminal value. You discount the free cash flows and the terminal value to the current year and add them together to get the total firm value. If you want to then calculate a price per share, firm value less the net financial obligations is equal to the equity value, divide through by the number of shares and you get a price per share. This slide here demonstrates a free cash flow valuation in Excel. It's for Smears company and the spreadsheet for all these examples is up on UTS online. Here we've done the free cash flow to value the equity. And down here, I've just put it in a formula sort of way. So you can think about if you want to do the valuation, just applying this formula, it would look like this red text down here. Or if you wanted to use Excel, you can set it up in this. The free cash flow model is very useful. You don't have to do as much of an accounting analysis and understand the accounting of the business to value the company. However, there are some problems with it. Okay, there are some things that can lead it to be a little bit more inaccurate. And Walmart is going to be the example we use here. Walmart is a huge company. Most people I'm sure have heard of it as one of the largest retailers in the world. And we've got some old information here from the late 80s and the early to mid 1990s. Uh, their cash from operations and their cash investments. If we have a quick look, their cash investments are much higher than their cash from operations. So that means when you calculate their free cash flow, their free cash flow is negative for a lot of years. This is a hugely successful company. They're growing very rapidly. Look at how quick they've grown their cash from operations from 500 over 3000 in a couple of years. They're successful. They're growing. They're doing a fantastic job, but their free cash flows are negative because they are investing so much. So when you then value the company using free cash flows, if you're forecasting negative free cash flows, you're going to end up with a very low or even negative valuation. That means the difficulty of this methodology is that you have to make very long term forecasts to find out when the free cash flows actually become positive into the future. If you compare that to the residual income model or the residual operating income model, because they use either the owner's equity from the balance sheet or the net operating assets from the reformatted balance sheet, it captures those investments as a source of value. The free cash flow model is not using the balance sheet. So all those investments into assets the company are making are treated as a decrease in firm value. So from firms 1963 to 1996 in America, 
We've got decile, so each firm is broken up into groups of 10% each. About 40% of firms have average free cash flows that are negative. And about 30% of firms have average dividends which are negative. So the free cash flow model and the dividend discount model, for all these firms, 30 to 40% of firms that have negative cash flows or zero dividends, the forecasting component of applying these models is very difficult. You would have to make very long-term forecasts to think about when will this company actually start paying dividends or when will this firm actually have positive cash flows. Compare that to the residual income model or the residual operating income model because they use the balance sheet, the assets or the equity that capture some of the value of these firms that are growing and making investments. So overall, there's a few advantages and disadvantages of the free cash flow model. The advantage is it's easy. Cash flows are real. The cash flow statement's much more difficult to manipulate than profit and loss or the balance sheet. So they're not really affected by the accounting rules. It's very similar to the dividend discount model, but free cash flows may be more related to value creation than just dividend policy. So it might improve our ability to forecast there. The disadvantages are free cash flow doesn't measure value in the short term. Think about the Walmart example just before. Walmart were a successful growing business, but their free cash flows were negative because they were a growing business. Free cash flow does not measure value added in the short run. Every time Walmart were investing to build new stores, that was treated as a value decrease. The free cash flow went down, so it was decreasing their value. Now that doesn't make sense. They're doing this to actually increase their value. So investment is treated as a loss of value. The way to get around that is you have to do very long run forecasts. Free cash flow is partly a liquidation concept. You can increase cash flow by cutting back on investments or selling your assets. So if I'm a business and I'm selling my assets and I'm actually shrinking in size, that makes my free cash flows higher. And unless we're very careful with our forecasting, we would assume that that would increase the value of the business. Disadvantage, we have to do really much longer forecasting for the free cash flow model, especially for growing firms or young firms. Often analysts don't forecast free cash flows, they forecast earnings or earnings per share. So it's often not aligned with what analysts are actually forecasting. But this model does work really well when you've got a mature company that's stable, that's doing similar things each year, that's investing in a stable pattern. Then the free cash flow model is gonna be reasonably accurate in those cases. But unfortunately, although it's easy and simple to implement, the disadvantages often do outweigh the advantages. So now I'm going to go over to Gale Pacific and we'll do a demonstration of the free cash flow model. To implement the free cash flow model, I need to get my forecast free cash flows. So we've already forecast our free cash flows from our forecasting template. So my 2020 free cash flow estimate is here. And I'm going to drag it along to make sure I get the five years of free cash flow forecast. My discount factor, one plus cost of capital for the firm. And I drag that along here and I can calculate the present value of each of the free cash flows div by dividing the free cash flow by the discount factor. So I've got my present value of free cash flows and that should say, so next step is to calculate the terminal value. In year six, I'm gonna assume that the company is growing by 2% again. So I take my year five free cash flow and I multiply it by one plus my growth rate okay, of 2%. So now my year six free cash flow forecast is 2% higher than my year five free cash flow forecast. I can then calculate the terminal value, my year six free cash flow forecast, divided through by the cost of capital for the firm minus the growth rate of 2%. That gives me my terminal value, but I've calculated it in year five. So I need to present value that by dividing my year five terminal value by my year five discount factor and I now have the present value of the terminal value. So I can get the total firm value now. I can say, add up all of the discounted free cash flows and the discounted terminal value, and that gets me the total value of the firm. If I wanna value the shares, I need to minus the value of debt, which is the net financial obligations from my current reformatted balance sheet. And that gives me my equity value. Firm value minus debt equals equity value, divide through by the number of shares and I get a price per share of 25 cents, which is estimated to be higher than the current share price, so we would recommend a buy. As I've said in all these videos, it's not investment advice. I'm not recommending you to buy this company. I'm just showing it as an illustration of how to implement the models. Okay, that's all for the free cash flow model. Thank you very much.